From the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 13, we find these words. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessedness of hope. The blessedness of hope. We mark the beginning of Advent this morning by lighting the first candle. The first candle that we light represents hope. One of the most powerful enduring forces in the world today is our hope. Hope is a vital resource that is needed in all avenues of life. Mm -hmm. It will enable us to meet the most dire of circumstances with determination and fortitude. Yeah. It is an assurance that trouble won't last always. You know, I wouldn't go fishing well, if I didn't hope to catch something. Or if I didn't think I'd catch something. I wouldn't spend long hours preparing sermons if I didn't hope well, to get some results from some people. Right. I guess I wouldn't go to church if I didn't hope to gain something. Uh -huh. They don't hope to gain something. <coughs> Excuse me. And perhaps that's why some people don't come to church. Well. They don't hope to gain anything. All right. yeah. Nothing that will help them in life. If I get up in the morning on a Sunday, when I can lay back in my bed, if I don't hope to find anything when I get there. Uh -huh. Well, right. a mother was taking her four-year-old daughter to school, and she was a doctor and had a stethoscope <coughs> on the car seat. The little girl picked it up and very excitedly began to play with it. Excellent, thought the mother doctor. My daughter wants to follow in my footsteps. Well, and then the child spoke into the instrument. He said, hello, welcome to McDonald's, may I take your order? <laughs> <laughs> All parents have high hopes for their children. Well, <laughs> hope and faith are closely linked together. But there are clear distinctions. Faith has worked to perform. It moves the process. It ascends the mountain, crosses the desert, and spans the waters. Hope cheers on faith along the way and points to a reward at the end of the journey. Faith is described in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. Yeah. And the message is heard through the word of God. Yeah. So, so as believers, our faith is sourced in hearing the message through the word of God. Mm -hmm. Hope, however, comes by experience. Romans again, chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 3 from 5 says, not only so, but we glory also in suffering. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. Yeah. Character, hope. Mm -hmm. And hope does not put us to shame. Yeah. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yeah. So, so hope comes by your journey, your experience, as you make your way in life. God plans things along the pathway to give us reason to have hope. Faith accepts the gift of promise. Uh -huh. well, hope confidential, confidentially, confidently rather, expects the fulfillment of that promise. Mm -hmm. When 18 year old Heidi was thrown from her car mm -hmm. and suffered a head injury. Yeah. It was a real miracle that she recovered yeah. and was soon in rehab. Mm -hmm. uh, she was learning to walk again through rehab and therapy. therapy. And as she was going through the process, a young 16-year-old girl named Abby was brought to the same rehab. Mm -hmm. 
Well, she had suffered a similar injury in an accident. And she wasn't talking or walking. When Heidi heard about Ashley, she asked her mother to wheel her into Ashley's room. At her bedside, she stood up with every ounce of her own strength and then said to Ashley, when I came here, I wasn't walking or talking either. Ashley's parents looking on and Ashley had been given hope. Heidi had planted the seed of hope yeah. in, in Ashley's life. Yeah. And before long, Heidi and Ashley were making laps around the hallway together. You see, when you have hope, uh -huh. what yeah. seems impossible yeah. can become possible. Yeah. The word of God says much about hope, but it never doesn't use the term to mean uncertainty or doubt. Well, we err when we use the term saying, I hope I'm a Christian. Mama. As much as I would be for me to say, I hope I'm African American. Well, I do not hope to be something that I know I already am. I don't hope to be a Christian. I am a Christian. What? In the blood of the Lamb, I don't hope to be African American. I was born that way. There's not much I hear you about. Amen. This morning, three classes in the world today in respect to hope. There are those who have no hope, those who have false hope, and those who have true hope. And let us consider the first class of people who have no hope. Ephesians says, Remember that at a time you were separate from God, excluded from citizenship in Israel and farther to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in the world. Uh -huh. According to God's word, there are those still today who are described as having no hope and without God in the world. While you may think that there are many who have no hope, I disagree. Hope is essential to the human soul, yeah. as faith is to our society. Well, a life without hope becomes an, un, un, an unbearable, miser miserable, burdensome life, uh -huh. too grievous to be born. There are things that come in your world that if you don't have hope, oh my. Well, you can't hang on. God himself recognized the necessity of hope for the human soul. Yeah. You, you Bible students will recall in Genesis chapter 3 after Adam and Eve had sinned, they were without hope. Yeah. Their situation was hopeless because God had already said, the day you eat of this fruit, uh -huh. yeah. you shall surely die. Yeah. But God condescended to, to the need of man
committed suicide. The rate of suicide among the youth is growing at an alarming rate. What a terrible thing for the young and old alike to be without hope. You see, one who has no hope has no reason to carry on. I want you to know, life will deal you enough trouble that it will snatch you and put you at the doorstep of death. And if you have no hope, you just might cross over. Now, let's move on and turn our attention to the class of folk relying on false hope. Matthew chapter 7 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, well, in your name drive out demons, yeah. in your name perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Mm. Away from me, you evildoers. Yeah. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house upon the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does them not, and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who builds his house upon the sand. The rain comes down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Yeah. Sadly, those who have false hope are more numerous and worse off than those who have no hope. They are not found in some distant, brutal land. Well, many who have false hope can be found right here in our own community. False hope is far worse than no hope at all. A man finds himself hopeless may be inclined to accept true hope. But the one who has false hope admits his hope was in vain, has to admit that his hope was in vain before he can accept another. Mm. Yeah. False hope seemed to be sufficient until the time of testing comes. Okay. Yeah. Many women, men and women have found that their hope was merely vain when trouble came. Well, uh, yeah. Those who have false hope do not build upon a firm foundation. Yeah. They are like the foolish man who builds his house upon the sand. Yeah. A drunk who thinks he can quit any time he likes has false hope. Yeah. Those who think they can escape their problems by getting high have false hope. Yeah. The thief who thinks he can steal without consequences has false hope. The church member who thinks that their baptism, their name on the membership roll, uh, is all that's necessary to escape hell, have false hope. The rebellious child who disobeys his or her parents and thinks he or she has gotten away with their actions, have false hope. There are also those who believe in religion without Christ. And they too oh, yeah. have false hope. Yeah. Yeah. In God's word, Eli's sons were evil, but thought that since they were born into a prominent family, they could get away with their actions. Mm -hmm. False hope. Uh -huh. yeah. Even wisdom that is not founded upon the fear of God is vanity and vexation of spirits. There are those who believe that repentance can be made after one dies. Well, that's uh, false hope. Oh, yeah. If you don't repent on this side, uh, well, don't think you got time on the next. Uh, uh, there are those that believe that if they marry a trifling, mean-spirited, or womanizing man, uh, or a flirtatious woman, uh, well, they can lead them to Christ. Uh, false hope. Uh, you see, the list of false hope continues on and on. Even in our day and age, false hope rises all around us. And if you don't, not careful, you'll buy into it. That's 
how some folk go following after charlatans who call themselves men and women of God. Yeah. Well, yeah. They got false hope. They believe that if I follow this person, yeah. if I believe this person, I'll get the victory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Finally, let us examine the third class of people with true hope. And what is true hope? There is only one in regards to salvation. Yeah. God declares in Hebrews chapter 6, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. And we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Peter put it this way. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead yeah. and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded mm. by God's power wow. until his coming of salvation. Amen. True hope, in other words, yeah. is found in Christ Jesus. Yeah. True hope can get you through the battle. Yeah. True yeah. hope yeah. can make help you make it through the storm. Yeah. Three men one day fell into a well. Well, was deep and it was cracked, and they struggled but could not find their way out. Mm. The harder they tried, the more difficult it became, the more worn out they became. Mm. After a while, one man said, I give up. I can't. I'm tired of trying. I don't want to continue to give myself a reason to think I can get out when I know I can't. Mm. And consequently, he sat down and did nothing. Second man still looked at him and said, listen, I believe I can get out. I just need a friend to come by, and I think he'll come by and lend me a helping hand. Well, and he waited on that friend, and he waited on that friend, and he waited on that friend, and that friend never came by. And gave him a helping hand. Finally, he gave up and said, the third man was standing up still, and he said, listen, I've got a reason to keep on trying. Amen. And they said to him, don't you see? We've been struggling and struggling, aren't you tired of trying? Mm. He said, but I've got this hope Amen. that God knows I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. And that if God knows I'm here, he'll take you away yeah. to get me out of this hole. Yeah. 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 The other two men gave up, looked at him like he was crazy. Mm -hmm. As time went on, they began to get hungry. No one came. They got thirsty. No one came. After a while, the body began to decrease in the body weight it counted. Still nobody came. Two of the men, one of the men said that said, I just want to die, I can't take it no more. And consequently his wish was granted, his weight fell off so drastically he died. The second man, he looked at the first man and said, I don't want to die, but I don't think I can make it. And he gave up. Uh -huh. And consequently he too died. Uh -huh. But the third man kept looking up. Okay. Kept expecting yeah. yeah. God yeah. to do yeah. something. After a while, by and by, God would make a way. He sat there by himself, looking at his two friends who had closed their eyes for the last time, still believing that the Lord would make a way somehow. Yeah. As he sat there in his misery, hoping and looking up, suddenly the light from the hole up above was covered over. Because the shadow of someone had come by. He's all right. yeah. And as the shadow of somebody came by, he stood up and yelled out, I'm down here. Can you help me up? The man leaned over and looked in and saw the brother laying down at the bottom of the well and he threw down the rope. Mm. And he came up and he climbed up yeah. and he said, The man said, How did you know I was here? He said, I didn't know. Uh -huh. In fact, I wasn't even planning to come this way. Yeah, well, yeah. But something said to yeah. me, why don't you take this road yeah. instead of that road? Yeah. And so I took it. And as I took the road, I heard somebody crying out. I just want you to know that if you have hope, God will make a way for you. Reason to have hope. Yeah. If you love the Lord, you got a reason 
reason to have hope. If you gave your life to him, you've got a reason to have hope. Why do you come? I don't think he comes when you want to. But as anybody will testify, he's always, always Hope will hold on to you. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. 